In the meantime, let's take a look at the bigger picture. David Wright's with us, president and owner Wright Financial Group. Thank you for being here. So we got our CPI print. Tomorrow will be PPI. What were your thoughts, and how do you think the Fed will interpret that for tomorrow when they make their announcement? Thanks for having me back, Nicole. I, you know, it wasn't any great shocker. I think the core CPI came in a little hotter than they expected on the month over month. But the reality of this whole situation is the Feds know, Chairman Powell especially knows, that with all the money printing and all the, you know, increased uh, borrowing uh, and increased uh, cash into the market uh, during 2021, they reacted too slow. So in my opinion, they're not going to do anything tomorrow. There's not going to be any Fed adjustment on the rate hikes. I believe it could be all the way through 2024, perhaps maybe even in the final two quarters of 2024 before we see any kind of rate uh, pivot uh, downward, just because, you know, whatever happened to the mandate of 5% uh, unemployment, we're at 3.7 unemployment. And I know the Fed's mandate is to get to uh, steady employment and steady prices. And they've achieved that, but they still have a 5.5% federal funds rate. So if we're at 5.5% federal funds rate and we have achieved full employment, uh, unemployment at 3.7, they're not at the 5%, you know, why are they cutting rates? What, what's the reasoning behind that, I guess, is my, my question back to you. Right, and that seems to be um, the question that a lot of people are having if and when the Fed will cut rates. Will it be first half, second half? Um, I even had a guest today who actually guessed that there's a possibility they could raise rates in January because within the CPI report, and you look year over year, you still have food higher year over year, um, new cars are higher, uh, several things, right? Um, shelter shelter um, ab ab is another, absolutely. shelter and housing is another area of concern, right? Yeah, I mean, overall, if you look at inflation over the long haul, energy still up about 34 percent, electricity up 24 percent, food at home up about 20 percent. So all of those numbers post-COVID are still reality for most middle Americans. And when you look at the number of credit card foreclosures, credit card delinquencies over the past quarter, $228 billion more put on credit. Uh, now exceeding 17 trillion in consumer credit. We're not there yet. See, uh, your last guest talked about Airbnb, Verbo, uh, the fact that they're downgrading those things. Uh, middle Americans are a little bit later in uh, spending all of that COVID cash they got earlier uh, a couple of years ago. So what we're seeing is some demand destruction occurring. But I believe before the feds go further with demand destruction, we need to see more uh, layoffs, we need to see uh, more foreclosures, $68,000 or 68,000 home foreclosures in the last quarter alone. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge number, Nicole, and uh, I think it, it's gonna continue as we see rates where they are right now. But I don't think feds wanna jump too quickly and see this inflation start ticking back up because of all the cash uh, that's now starting to run dry. Right, understood. So in the meantime here, what do you tell investors? Well, I tell investors that they need to invest for purpose over performance. Uh, obviously, there are stocks out there that have done fantastically well, the Magnificent Seven. And of course, you have a number of guests that deal with that uh, whole issue of the Magnificent Seven. But I tell investors to make sure that they know what their money's for, understanding that good paying dividends and interest bear, uh, bearing types of investments are what they need to talk about as they plan forward in their retirement. If their money is not needed for a while, there's still some gems out there that can be found in the large cap technology space. But right now, for the intentional middle class American that needs their 401k now converted to an IRA to give them income, they need to invest for purpose, not performance, invest for income, not necessarily for what's gonna happen in the stock market next year. This year, kind of a total surprise with what happened in the growth markets in all three major indices. It's funny because I heard one person actually say, and sort of um, with conviction, that the winners of, la of 2023 will not be the winners of 2024. I thought that was 
I mean, I don't know who has that kind of crystal ball, but what would you say about the winners of 2023 and what they could or may do in 2024? Well, they could they could continue to 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 build on what they've done in 2023, but I think uh, what all this is uh, leading towards is that the high end of the spectrum, the the wealthier Americans, the companies that are on the leading edge of technologies of AI research, they're going to probably continue to lead the way. But I think more of the middle Americans, the more of the middle class, more of the stocks that handle day-to-day -day consumer staples, some consumer discretionary. Those companies, I think, over time, because of increased interest rates, increased borrowing costs, uh, increased uh, costs to their bottom line, are going to have to put that cost on to consumers, which in turn is going to hurt consumers in the long run. So I think you're going to have a rate cut down the road, but I still think that these growth companies may still have some growth left, but in the in the end run, I still see things swinging back more towards value and income over the long haul, uh, just because it has to. It has to match up and and balance itself. Right, understood. Are you concerned about the money supply or other things? You know, we had all these auctions of treasuries. You know, the inf sort of undoing what the Fed did um, by issuing all those. Any other, you know, elements? I'm just trying to think of other elements that you may be thinking about. I don't want to miss them, David. Well, I think that the Feds are continuing their quantitative tightening. They're certainly shrinking their balance sheet as much as possible. Uh, you know, I think $85 billion is still rolling off the, the uh, Treasuries uh, in, the, in that area. They're trying to reissue new debt. But frankly, uh, the credit downgrade of the United States. We're still the, the, the best uh, economy in the world. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to, to uh, prosper no matter what. But I think the, the reality of the situation is monetary supply is going to dry up over time. Whether the Feds cut rates, keep rates where they are, uh, money supply is going to shrink. And when the money supply shrinks, you're going to have everyday consumers scrambling to stay in their houses pay their credit card debts, and literally just be able to breathe. I keep bringing up the consumer because they're 70 percent of our economy. So we have to understand middle Americans, the uh, consumers are going to drive the market eventually. Right. David Wright, Wright Financial Group. Thank you so much. Thanks. Nicole.